this is our 3 p.m. presentation of the 8th Annual Virtual Con. We've had an amazing day packed with wonderful presentations. Just so everybody knows that we are streaming live on two metaverses right now, Otherverse Classic and Otherverse Zeon. And if anyone's hey. having any, yeah, and if anyone's, and if anyone's having trouble getting into that, we just released a patch today. Please be patient. It does take a little bit of time to get in there, and our support staff is on standby to help you with that. We're also streaming on YouTube, on Twitch, Discord, everywhere, all over the place. And so I am here monitoring everything for questions. Um, so I will be here. I will turn my camera off so that we can be focused on you and your amazing presentation. But before I do that, I am going to introduce you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is a Pixie Fall at Dizuti, and... You are an entrepreneur and founder of Local Local Choice Spirits, a Charleston-based liquor distribu distributor. Uh, you also lead- I'm actually a manufacturer. Well, it, well, there you go. <laughs> and you also lead Skirt Magazine Media, right? I do own Skirt. Awesome, awesome. And you are Charleston's first, which is Charleston's first women's magazine, correct? Yes. Right. Charleston's first distillery, Charleston's first hybrid brewery distillery, tri Charleston's first women's magazine. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I also have here at 58, you expanded your ventures by acquiring Striped Pig Distillery, the city's mm -hmm. first distillery since Prohibition. Yeah, I can't wait to hear about that. that. That's pretty cool. And through Local Choice Spirits, you focused on promoting diverse female-led brands in the male-dominated spirits industry. Love that. Love that. Um, you're also embracing blockchain, having launched the first spirit-related NFT and published your book, Alphabet Soup, the yeah. ABC. NFTs in 2023. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And you also host the podcast, Spiritually Speaking with Pixie Bala. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. Glad to have you. So the floor is all yours. Go for it. Okay. Well, I, you know, what you haven't said, most people don't even know, is I am a non-denominational ordained minister. And so in my heart of hearts, giving service and leading by serving has really been my MO, my entire life, not just my career, like my entire life. And so when I, I was came off Wall Street, helped to take major companies public, uh, built five-star golf resorts around the US. And when I got moved by the universe into the multi-trillion dollar alcohol industry, I said, what am I going to, I put ice in my red wine. What the heck am I going to do in this multi-trillion dollar industry that's leading and serving. Well, the universe had a bigger, better plan than anything I could have imagined. And so I launched the concept Sip and Share on the platform of Local Choice Spirits so that we are really giving meaning to let's drink responsibly. And that is probably the first time ever that these conversations around charity, cause marketing turned into cause commerce came together within the alcohol industry. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that in my presentation and hopefully get everybody motivated and excited and inspired to figure out where they can collaborate in their communities to extend and expand their business reach and making everybody together, you know, rising tides raises all ships make everybody more prosperous and through that prosperity comes celebration. So I'm excited about what it brings and I'm happy to share this presentation with you. Absolutely love that. Looking forward to it. Okay, so Web3 and NFT cause marketing for the new age because it works. And I'm gonna share some examples with you and show you how it does work and try to help you think outside the box as you're moving through Web3 and and where we know integration is going, but how can you be a leader that does something pretty great for your community? All right, so Calvin Coolidge, um, at, uh, our president from 1923 to 1929, was the first one to actually start speaking about trade. Through the Industrial Revolution, when we started really bringing a lot of corporations to the forefront and business started to take its, its launch in the United States, he recognized that cause marketing is probably going to be the most socially responsible thing out of trade. And he said, advertising ministers to the spiritual side of trade, it is a great power that has been entrusted to your keeping, which charges you with the high responsibility of inspiring and ennobling the commercial world. It is all part of the greater work of regeneration and redemption of mankind. So he recognized right away that as we start moving into commercialism, we are also to administer to the spiritual side of trade. There's nothing more important than human currency. 
And so it doesn't matter if it's cryptocurrency or digital currency or whatever tokens or whatever value of um, value we're adding to any identifier, the human value, the spiritual side of trade is still our greatest currency. And he recognized from that long ago that as we start to move through the commercial world, it would be an extremely important for us to recognize what that value is and where do we lead. He, by the way, was the only president born on the 4th of July. Just side note. Next slide. So what is Web3 cause marketing? Well, Web3 cause marketing is marketing for the primary benefit of social or charitable causes. And when expanded to Web3 cause commerce, every commercial transaction supports that cause. How? With revenue, right? With trade, sometimes with education. And so as you're figuring out how you're going to be marketing in Web3, you, I would strongly encourage that you think about the primary benefit of adding a social or charitable lead to your Web3 marketing. Create conversations. Web3 cause marketing is not charity. Very different from donations of the past and charitable events of the, of the past. It's so much more than writing a check, right? We're, we've moved out of physical check writing. It's raising awareness through conversations that might never have taken place before. And it is building networks of people with similar values around similar causes in the new internet. That's really big, guys. It's really big stuff. And if you align your brand values with the consumer needs, then we've now moved into web free cause marketing. It's not just selling a product or service to someone. People are buying into your brand's values and how you can help support their needs. And with that alignment, you can use blockchain technology to really administer to the revenue of both campaigns, right? Bringing people and campaigns together so that everybody wins. And this is really the way of the future. This is what decentralization is one of its main benefits. So I'm going to plant the seed again. Think about everything that you're doing moving forward with your business to how you attach it to Web3 cause marketing. Next slide. Okay, what are some examples of when cause marketing really made a difference? The very first huge, and I mean huge, example of having a big for-profit company, let's call it Marriott in this example, come together with a cause marketing partnership. The Great American Theme um, Park in Santa Clara, California launched for raising dollars for the March of Dimes. They decided that by partnering together and having all the proceeds from day one go towards March of Dimes, this would be the very first example of cause marketing coming together with a big commercial partner. And they shattered attendance records all over the world still to date. This is still the leading park opening of, of all time. They raised $2.5 million, which in, that was 1976. So that's $13.5 million in today's dollars the same day as the opening day of the Pirates of the Caribbean. So by partnering the Marriott with the March of Dimes, they were able to accomplish world shattering records, still the highest park opening of all time. And isn't that amazing that it was joined with the March of Dimes and how the March of Dimes benefited so much from that. It's sad to me that Disney didn't follow suit, that Universal didn't follow suit, that all of these other, you know, big commercial partners don't follow suit because look at what amazing things happen. Next slide. American Express is actually coined with the first cause mark, the, the first person to use the word cause marketing. They actually coined it. They coined the phrase. They own the phrase. And how that came to be in 1983 when Statue of Liberty needed restoration. So American Express partnered with the nonprofit um, restoration project and they got together and they said, we'll earmark a dollar for every new card issue, a penny for every transaction for the American on the American Express card would go towards the restoration of the of the Statue of Liberty. And what happened? They raised one point seven five million dollars, five point two one million dollars in today's dollars. 
their new users increased by 17%. So think of the benefit of, of what they got out of this. And their transactions increased 28%. And we got a new Lady Liberty. And now they are forever known as coining cause marketing. And I love this. I love that American Express did this. And I worked for American Express for 30 years, teaching financial planning and emotional competency and relationship training. So I love that they did this. Next page. So her, what's some other examples of cause marketing today? Delta by far is probably my most favorite. Um, Delta has raised millions of dollars for women with breast cancer. They have the Delta plane that caters to women with breast cancer and taking their families anywhere across the globe they need for proper treatment. It's an organization that is heavily women dominated just because a lot of the flight attendants until recently, right, but still for the majority of their career, it's been women who are their flight attendants. So half of their, more than half of their workforce was women. And when women are affected, one woman dies every 14 minutes from breast cancer in the United States. One woman dies every 14 minutes from breast cancer in the United States. Is that insane? So the fact that they alone are putting millions of dollars and contributing their pink lemonade um, campaign throughout the year, that they're flying a, pl a pink plane around the world as global recognition for how they feel about cause marketing. I'm just so impressed that they did that. Again, why didn't all the other airlines come on board and follow suit? There doesn't have to be only one. More examples, Paul Newman's own, who started his charity in his own garage with um, the salad dressing, and now in his estate runs the Paul Newman's own um, Kids for Cancer Foundation. This is up in Litchfield, Connecticut area, and he's grown to include salad dressings and um, salsas and barbecue sauces and tomato sauces, all the things that just keep added, adding to the Paul Newman zone. And that was just out of his desire in the beginning to do something to raise money for his foundations. Um, the Yum Company with Pizza Hut and Kentucky Fried Chicken and Taco Bell does a great job with what they give back to their to school systems and Meals on Wheels, uh, Tom Shoes most people are familiar with. And They've gone through years and years of reiterations of what Tom Shoes looked like, even through bankruptcy and building again, but coming from the impact that they just really wanted to make a difference. And the famous Amos, um, you know, Willie Amos, just by, he started making some cookies. He was just making cookies and selling cookies. And he, in the end, single-handedly wiped out illiteracy in the United States from selling cookies. So this is why these things are so important, because if you, as you're building your business, can wrap your head around how you try to utilize Web3 marketing in a big way and unite whatever you're building into your platforms so that there's a charity and cause marketing component, you can, you just make such a difference and it just doesn't take that much. It's really about motivating everybody to think in the right mentality. Let's go to next. So I thought, okay, how am I going to do this? What am I going to do? And when I got moved into the spirit space, I said, surely with my skill set and designations, God can't put me in the universe to want to be a door-to-door -door vodka salesman. And I came kicking and screaming. And then I had a dream. I literally did have a dream about the sip and share story and the platform of sip and share. And so what we do is we give $2 a bottle back for any of our products that are purchased in conjunction with a, a fundraiser or community education program. And so now we let people sip at the distillery or purchase products and ask for any of the local trace striped pig products. They're enjoying a better cocktail. And now we're shifting that cocktail really into an ongoing fundraising mechanism for the consumer. And the consumer becomes a philanthropist just by having a cocktail. And then we're sharing those proceeds with local fundraising initiatives. So there's no wasted advertising dollars, right? Because the, the revenue is directly funneled back into local communities, doing what people were already doing anyway. I'll talk a little bit more about this in, in a minute. Go ahead. So what, what has, why does it matter? 
we raised thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Here's just examples. Um, Ronald McDonald House, the Avon Golf Cup Charity Classic and Breastwalk, the March of Dimes, the Special Olympics, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Hootie and the Blowfish Foundation, uh, the Oxygen Foundation, Tri-County Veterans. We raised $100,000 on one Saturday evening a couple months ago, third year. First year, $30,000. Second year, $50,000. This year, $100,000. We just got um, honored with the Sip and Share proclamation by the mayor. And August 17th of every year now is our day. And I, I brought oh, close to 50 nonprofits to the distillery on one day at one time under one roof we brought all the nonprofits together for a nonprofit Palooza, that spirit of giving day over in the right hand corner. Never has this been done before. The importance about bringing everybody together is that they get to learn about the resources of each other and how to share resources and notice what e each group is doing so that they can piggyback off of what another group is doing and be that much more um, formidable. And not only that, but all the people that got to come in, it was, it was so heartwarming, guys. I can't even tell you. It, all the people that came in to try things, didn't know these resources were here. So we were sharing resources amongst each other, the nonprofits, but then we had one big collective playground for all the consumers to come in and participate and learn about these services. It was a magical day. So we will be doing that every year as close to August 17th, whatever Saturday is closest to August 17th moving forward. And we were honored by the mayor. It's just such a great thing. Next slide. So how do you integrate cause marketing into Web3 and add value to your brand? Be creative. What did I do? I launched an artist contest. So I knew I wanted to do a, a, an NFT around around the bottles. And I and we ended up choosing the first barrel of bourbon ever made in South Carolina. And I created 111, because 1111 is my magic portal number, 111 individual NFTs. And then I thought, okay, I give back. I lead through integration. So how am I going to do this? Well, I didn't just want to pick artwork. I had, Then I launched an artist contest. So now I brought artists from all over the NFT space to submit their submissions of what they thought the artwork for the Stripe Pig NFT should look like. And that was heartwarming. And I got to meet so many amazing people in and of itself. We went from concept to waiting list in like 20 minutes. And we so we created the individual 111 NFTs. And I was really pushing the ground here because you know, and even more so now, but running through the regulations, the in, the alcohol industry is so highly regulated. So everything had to take place in my distillery, taking title in the distillery. We're not really um, selling anything, right? The NFTs are being sold, but it's the first time that we were really doing asset-based uh, investments to an NFT. And that gave them the first membership rights and bragging rights and flex rights and 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 raise conversations around how this can happen, which prompted me to write the book, Alphabet Soup, which we'll talk about in a minute. So we launched the artist contest. We brought an entire community together. We had a town hall. We selected the artwork and um, um, our gentleman decided to do 111 individual, slightly individual NFTs. So you can see number 63. I was born on 6363. So that's my number up there. So the Stripe Pig number 63, that's what that NFT looked like. And again, it goes with a coveted, this isn't, this isn't the bottle. I don't know if you can see this, but anyway, it has its coveted bottle sitting in the liquor locker. And that, so that's a way to take my business and integrate it with an NFT, bring together a community cause. We are also just integrating now, um, accepting uh, Bitcoin into our um, cash register so that you'll be able to do an ATM transaction with Bitcoin and then be able to purchase with Bitcoin as well. So next uh, slide, please. All right. Alphabet soup. So... That, so I wrote the book because so many people were saying, well, why an NFT and what does that mean? And I've heard about NFTs. And I started doing the research 
as I, first of all, you know, I own a media company. So I own Holy City Publishing and Pixie Records and Studios and Skirt Magazine. So I'm used to doing journalism research. And so when I wrote the book, I started starting from where I was today and I would go back to see, well, how did that come to come to be and and then right before that well how did that come to be and how, how did that come to be and i traced nfts all the way back to morse code and so i hope you get my book because i was doing you gotta be kidding me on every page and i tried to create every page so that it's you gotta be kidding me kind of an attitude so i was just dur- doing this research trail all the way back it is literally from morse code to memes And I thought, okay, let's put this all together. So it's the ABCs of NFTs and other blockchain acronyms and the history of where they came from. I I was just so fascinated, guys. So I hope that you are too. It's an easy read and it's just a a tool that it was a number one bestseller immediately in like six or seven categories in education, in finance, in um, tokenization, in NFTs, in Web3. It's, I hope you get it. It's just so good. But you'll see, you'll be like, you gotta be kidding me. So this is a way that no one else can claim access to your holdings. You you can develop your own thing uh, with your own book, make your own stake and your own claim. And if anybody wants to publish their book through me, I am happy to do that. We have a lot of classes on that too, but happy to connect with anybody that would like to write their book, get it published, get it marketed and have an agency behind them. So that's Alphabet Soup and getting close to the next page. All right, here's, okay, stepping into the metaverse. How do I expand this and bring this to other people? Well, a couple of projects that I worked on with Peter working on and, and the entire team, the True Badger team, working on the potential here of a True Badger bourbon. How do, how do we take the story of True Badger and its underdog tale, similar to Striped Pig, and let that be the representation of overcoming challenges and getting out there and being really the first uh, journey into having an, an NFT on a label or just representing what the metaverse and block, blockchain and Web3 represent. So that's one example. I then raised a token with, an, uh, I sit on the board of Quan2, we raised a token and created a first token and actually got the token recognized in the city of Miami to be used um, as currency in the city. And we keep building on that. It's just been an amazing ride. My partner, Barry Mezzi, is highly autistic, but he's used his disadvantage or challenges for promoting um, awareness around autism and mental health. And it's, it's just so phenomenal to actually get a token that's recognized to, we're trying to do a deal where you can use those actual tokens to pay for healthcare. And the city is just really embracing what we're doing in Miami. So that's another example. A a third was dog talk. That was another bourbon that I created for um, Camp Nova. And that's kind of an online little metaverse that they put together and they created different dog NFTs to put on their bourbon label. So just, these are like kind of fun things that you can do to step into the metaverse. You are limited only by your own imagination when it comes to me. I will like create anything. Next slide. So I did create something, the Stripe Pig app. So I'm like, okay, how are we gonna get the app out there? And how are we gonna gamify the Stripe Pig and everything that I put together? So we created with Illusion Factory, uh, you would know them as Warner Brothers and Marvel, a, an app available on the App Store and on Google Play, and it's called the Stripe Pig. And it's a virtual reality pig that you can use. It, the, there's a setup, you can feed it and play with it and have your own pet and just you know feed him and take care of him. And he's like your little baby there. But the funny part of the augmented reality is that you can position the pig anywhere in your home outside on top of a steamboat engine and film the pig and the pig will look like he's exactly right running alongside or being with um whatever you're filming i filmed mine on i had one on mine on the super bowl i literally put him up on the screen during the super bowl so he was running around with the players on my tv because i can manipulate him up on the screen and doing a dance and rah rah and it came out so clever 
And then you can save that little video. And now it looks like the straight pig is can be around the globe. So we're going to launch a contest now to take pictures with the straight pig. Hopefully we'll get some celebrities to embrace dancing with the pig. We know the kids are going to be happy about playing with it. It is definitely under 21 friendly. So it's that's why it's stripepig.com, not stripepigdistillery.com, so that we are just gamifying the cute little pig himself. And similar to Peter's stories, it's like the ugly duck, duckling survives all the challenges. And what can the pig earning your stripes do to, to uh, facilitate a change in the marketplace? I hope everybody downloads it. It's a lot of fun. Next slide. Okay, so how does it measure up? I've, I've talked a big game here and I've been really excited about it because I am. And let's look at the measurements. I, I need for things to be objective and measurable. And this just gives the information. Learning. Sorry, this just gives the information of, of why this is such a big deal and it's not going away. 89% of consumers said they would switch their brands to one associated with a cause given comparable price and quality. 42% of consumers said they would even pay extra for these products and services from companies. And, and they, they want to give back. They want to be part. We're so busy, we don't have any time. If somebody is taking the guesswork out for you, it feeds your soul to do something. Well, what did we do? We put a super premium product in a, as a value price and then created the Web3 marketing opportunity to shift those dollars right back to the consumers in exchange for their brand loyalty. Sorry, Alexa decided to come on and tell the weather. I forgot 6.30 every day. <laughs> All right. In 2023, charities worldwide received over two trillion dollars in revenue americans gave 557 billion that is 2.1 percent of the u.s gdp out of 27 trillion 2.1 percent of the u.s gdp and the largest source of charitable giving came from individuals 374 billion of that 67 percent of the total giving they're not they're not coming from large corporations they're not coming from big companies they're not coming from major global estates and private family offices they're coming from individuals and the gift card market is currently valued at 767 billion dollars and growing at a cagr of 11 percent through 2026 so i started thinking if the gift card market is going like that and we can move NFTs, which in my head are no different than a gift card, then the and the NFT market itself is expected to reach greater than two billion by 2030. Then how do we combine these opportunities so that we leverage and make it easy for people to give back? And then the la my last thing here is the the 2023 CFW WGI results saw uh, as a result of this of the um, night uh, what do you call it COVID nineteen pandemic most of humanity decided most of humanity decided they were going to do something to help others. So when I'm telling you, just as Calvin Coolidge did, that you are ennobled to contribute to the commercial side of trade. I'm telling you, it's for your own good. Not only is it for the good of our communities, but it's for your own good. And I do really believe that Web3 is going to make it so much easier and trackable to be able to be measurable and objective and impactful in these causes. Next slide. Tip and share. This is our little postcard. So I'm gonna, it's easier now to explain it with him. We think it should be easy to choose premium products that help you celebrate and support good causes. The Sip and Share initiative helps you give back more by donating $2 per bottle sold in conjunction with a charitable education or fundraising event. So more money goes back to the cause your event is supporting. Sip and Share also provides the opportunity for dollars from a gathering at our bar to support a cause of your choosing. Curious about fundraising? You can order strip pop bottles in conjunction with a qualifying event. You can set up an event at your location or with your network or retailer. 
or you can work with your own community retailers or liquor stores to bring that incentive to your community. And my quote here, Sip and Share was created from the heartfelt vision of Pixie Paula when celebration and prosperity come together. What could be more inspirational? Let's give real meaning to drinking responsibly. You might say, okay, I had this little dream and the sip and share thing came to me and it's my great little clever thing. But let me give you another example of where this happened that you already know about and you'll be able to relate to this and how big this could be. Back in the day, there was another vice industry that was illegal in most states. It was called gambling. And regardless of it being legal or not, people were participating in gambling since the dawn of time. And there was off-track betting and, you know, behind the speakeasy gambling tables. And remember when you had to even go out on a cruise and you had to go so far offshore before you could gamble so that you wouldn't go to jail in the United States? Well, slowly but surely, even the conservative states started to adopt. And the ones that held back were really convinced by watching the fact that when it was brilliantly decided that 60% of the revenue of gambling, let's call it our state lottery, the state lottos, the scratch offs, the birthday gifts, 60% of that revenue would go top line directly to funding the education budgets, everybody adopted. And I'm gonna tell you with the, it's a huge industry, not as big as liquor, not even as big as liquor, but with that gambling industry, and I'm just calling it gambling in, in a positive way here, meaning everything under the umbrella. If you were to repeal gambling and make it illegal again in any state, the burden of taxation on the taxpayer to fund education out of their own pocket again would be so burdensome, you would have a revolt. I mean, basically, you would be repealing our public school systems so here's an example of where something that could be potentially vice, and we not, we're not speaking to abuse here, not abuse in anything, not abuse in gambling, abuse in alcohol. Like I can't, that's not what I'm about. I'm about taking the industry that is already in existence and shifting it so that we are creating a better future by the billions of dollars that are being created from these industries. And I don't know how else to give these meaningful conversations without organizing these platforms. So think about if my sip and share program could be so compelling that we required Diageo and Pernod Ricard and Beam Centauri and Constellation Brands and William Grant and all the big suppliers and owners of the major big brands across the globe to have to make a contribution to carry the sip and share trust mark that said, when you're purchasing these products, at the same time of having a celebration around a martini, you're putting up a playground or you're doing, forget the car washes and the Yankee candle sales and the world's finest chocolate and the wrapping paper and all this stuff. How many times have you stood in the rain for a car wash or had to quickly make some cupcakes or run out to buy brownies because they you had to get something for the sale or the Girl Scout cookies, which aren't giving huge amounts of money back to these causes. Some of these charities, as you well know, are uh, the money is going to wherever. Sip and share is measurable. Just like the state lottery was measurable, sip and share can be that space within the multi, multi-trillion dollar uh, beverage industry. Next slide. Are you authentic? Not only does this raise money for everybody and raise awareness, but it brings authenticity and the chance for you to identify who are you, what, not what's your passion, but we all have passion. It comes and goes and flares and wanes. It, it's really more about what is your purpose? Who are you on the planet? What are you doing within your businesses and moving forward? And these are really hard questions to ask. It's your purpose that drives you and you'll be out of alignment with your passion. I promise you that. You will never be out of alignment with your purpose. You can't take it away from you. It's who you are at your core. And I really believe that the brands that are strong enough to become market leaders in 24 and beyond are an extension of the creators who are strong enough to be the market leaders. So we go right back to Calvin Coolidge again. You are administered with the spiritual side of trade. 
So as we're building out this technology, it is your noble, we are, you are ennobled to create something amazing with it. Next slide. Stay in touch. You can find me at Skirt Charleston, uh, at Pixie Paula Official on Facebook and Instagram, or uh, Paula Dizzuti. I would love it for you to follow the Striped Pig Distillery as well. You'll find out everything that's going on there it, on skirt.com. You can sign up for a skirt alert and just be know everything that I'm doing in the universe. And I would um, just implore you to support the people like myself, and I'm hoping now, like every one of you, are really trying to uplift everybody and drive Web3 into cause marketing commerce so that the world can be truly not just a better place, but be the best place that it possibly can be. Thank you, Pixie. That was amazing. I have a few questions that have come in sure. from the audience. Can I can I give them to you? Absolutely. Awesome. So do you want to go to the next slide or do oh, you want to sure. just leave? Actually, you can leave to stay in touch. It's probably good. I think we could go backwards. Yeah, go back. Oh, right. well, I, <laughs> I just screwed it up. <laughs> oh, well, it's all right. Sure. You know what? I can put it up. I can put it up after. Let's put you up on okay. the screen here right now so that they can see you while we answer the questions. Sure. And then I can figure out what I'm doing here with this. I'm uh, I'm new at the slides, but I'm old hat when it comes to working the video. Um, all right. So the first question that I have that's coming from inside the metaverse, if I have a small retail biz in other verse, so it's all digital goods. I'm small and operate on a big platform. What are the three most important things I should do to get myself started in creating a fundraising campaign? How do I begin? That's awesome. So the first thing is go to identifying your purpose, right? Because I said passion isn't the important part. It's important to keep you as motivated as possible, but you'll stay in alignment with your purpose. So first find something that really resonates with you. Like you feel like, you know what? I was really made to make a difference here because then when it's like rainy and crappy and you're tired, you won't be relying on your passion because you'll know, no, I'm already in alignment. This is my purpose. I'm going to do it. So the first thing is to find the one thing that resonates with you. The second thing is to have a conversation with that group to see how they feel about alignment and working together. Because it's important, this is a two-way street. It's important that the campaign you're gonna run is as equally appreciated by the people you're running it with. You know, you can lead a horse to water, right? But if they don't wanna participate or do their part, it won't be a successful campaign or drive. So you might have to filter interviews by having conversations with people, how do you feel about this? And you'll see, because with me, it's like either 50 to 100 people show up in a room or they're like, well, maybe like, let's we'll think about it next month. Month, you know, that's how it goes. So you got to have that campaign conversation with them and make sure it's going to be a two way street. And then the third thing is to find the thing that actually is the right amount, the thing that's going to be measurable to the consumer that they're going to want to engage with. You two could come together and have this exciting, you know, synergy between you. And But now you ha it has to resonate with the consumer. What does the consumer need? Because they're going to be your fighting agents. What are they going to fight for? And that's the third part of it. As long as they can see it in reality out in the universe and they're working towards a goal, then you'll get your support by your consumers. The next question I have is, what has been the biggest challenge that you have faced when working in this industry? The, you know, it's always me. It's always an inside job, <laughs> everything when you're facing challenges because we're manifestors, right? We're creating. Um, <sighs> At the end of the day, it is really always you. It's it really is. But what are the real the things that pop up? Um, people that are you know you hear the crazy things NFTs. Oh, those are those illegal things or NFTs. That's um, that's getting shut down or I don't know anything about Web three. I'm like that's why I wrote a book. Um, um, this is just a fad or a phase or it's not really gonna go anywhere. So people will shy away. The example I give when I hear that mostly is I ask people how many of them take a picture of a check and deposit a check into their checkbook. And almost everybody in this day and age is doing that. And I say, well, that's an NFT. I said, do you want us to repeal that technology so that you have to actually go to the bank again? And everybody's like, hell no. I go, okay, well then guess what? The progression of technology is not going away. So let's get beyond that bias. And now let's work together for common causes. 110%. Another question I have is, 
I have all these big ideas and that overwhelms me. Where do I even begin? (laughs) (laughs) That's a hard one. (laughs) It's, you know, that's a good problem to have. And I laugh because I'm a manifester. And so I have, so I do Pythagoras and Hippocrates were the fathers of mathematics and they they knew from a very, very, very long time ago, right, that we are all wave energy and everything is measured in mass and every piece of that mass carries equal weight in the universe. And so when you're a manifester and you're putting things out there and you're generating this wave energy and things are starting to percolate, you have to be willing to recognize that it is still materializing at all times somewhere in whatever parallel universes or whatever is happening, you're putting out that energy. It's not going away, right? We know energy is neither created nor destroyed. It simply transfers form. So when you're thinking about this and you're putting out that energy, there's a vortex that comes right out of your beingness into the universe that is not going away. So I had to learn to throw away my to-do list because as I started to want to, I'm an analyst. As much as I am an expressive, I am also, I execute on my plans. So I would have a to-do list that was just overwhelming and overbearing based on all the things that had to do from all these projects that I had. And I had a download and then download, I was told, throw away your to-do list. And I was like, are you kidding me? Because I couldn't go to bed at night without making sure that I had checked off everything I needed to do or remain on task or else I would be overwhelmed by the next day and never be able to achieve what I wanted for the next steps. And I'm telling you is the thing that set me free. I threw away the darn to-do list and I came up with the concept, which I would encourage you to embrace. And I say this to myself every day. I am never going to get done today everything that I want to do today, but I'm going to get done so much more in the next year than I could have ever anticipated. And then I throw out all that energy. I will just brainstorm. I will allow myself the gift and the freedom to fantasize about all these manifestations. I will think about every single project I could possibly think about. And then I don't, I'm now not forced to have to think about the to-do list to go along with any of them. And a lot of the things just end up materializing on their own which is what I learned. Now, if I have a deadline, like, you know, pay the IRS by April 15th, it's going in my calendar, but I'm not, when I'm, as I'm manifesting and I'm building out my projects, I am no longer a slave to the logistics of what has to happen and things are falling into place. And remember, life doesn't fall out of the sky and land on your face. You want to know what you're committed to in life. Look at your life. So if you're second guessing what you manifested, just look around you. That's where you are in the journey. That was amazing. Thank you, Pixie. And actually, I have something that just came in. Thank you, Pixie. You're extremely inspiring. What advice would you tell me to give to my daughter who's trying to get a start in the crypto space? It's really, really nice. <laughs> my first thing is going to be get my book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer. That's a great answer. Yeah, my book. Because they can relate. How I don't know how old her daughter is, but like I reached to social media, I reached where they're living today, you know, how they're sharing, how their community is built is so different than our, you know, our prior generation, our our gen X, Y, and Zers are just so unique. You know, that that was one of the reasons for the mini skirt. I don't think I talked about this. So I just launched the mini skirt, which is a nonprofit 501c3. I should have talked about this, actually. So Skirt's been in existence for 30 years. I'm looking at the statistics for financial independence around women, and they haven't changed since the lunch and learn talks that I was giving in 1981. Ladies and gentlemen, they have not changed since 1981. And when I talk about the fact that a woman could get, not get a mortgage by herself prior to 1988, or a woman could not own, open a checkbook prior to 1975 without a man's signature, these are not like hey, hundreds of years old trends. No, these are recent changes that have taken place that allowed women to step into financial independence. And there is, I think we're going to probably talk about some of these things on the, in the next panel, but yep. there is no reason for you to stick your head in the sand. The, not the time. And now it's equal par, equal gender, equal space, like go for it. So formalize the ideas. I looked at this and said, if I'm still teaching financial literacy to my demographics of 45 to 65 year old women, 90% of whom 
are going to be 100% alone and still do not pay all their bills on time, we've got to reach younger women. So we started the mini skirt focusing on financial literacy for ages 14 to 24. So that's one thing. Go to skirt.com and sign her up. Let her start reading the, the mini skirt newsletters and we'll be doing pen pals across the globe. Got it. Got it. Got it. I uh, put up your contact info again because somebody just came into one of the theaters in the virtual space saying, who is this lady? What is her <laughs> name? And how do you contact her? You are gathering fans. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Pixie will be with us in uh, five, 10 minutes. We are going to be having at 4 p.m. the Women in Crypto panel. So I am absolutely delighted that she will continue to be with us for the next panel. Uh, Pixie, before we say goodbye to you, are you still here? Did I'm here. You? Yeah, I'm still, here. you're still here? Um, any last words before we say, just to close out this portion of the presentation? I mean, you're still going to be with us at four o'clock. Uh, for the next part. And, you know, that last piece that you just said is a great segue into our next conversation that we're going to have with some amazing women that I'm so excited to do. Um, but any last words uh, to close out this portion? You know, when you start allowing yourself to dream and start, it, it's natural as human beings to want to serve and to give and to nurture, especially women, but not just women. And if you start to think about the ways that you can work within your community and you can touch the lives of others through your businesses and through everything you're doing to develop out your web three, you, you're going to, you're going to be free if to just think of so many, so many things. My only advice would be not to limit yourself and, you know, sometimes as manifestors, not only do we manifest, but we get attached to the outcome and the result. And that's a hard lesson I've had to learn. It doesn't necessarily matter what the result you envisioned were. I'm letting go of what my thoughts were about how I begin with the end of mine. I was trained by Stephen Covey, right? Because now the ending is could be so much bigger than I could have even imagined. So yes, as manifestors, you have to have a vision and you have to begin with some kind of sight and stay committed and true to that vision, but also allow the vision to transform and mold on its own because it could be so much bigger than even you anticipated. Amen to that. Amen to that. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. 10 minutes right here on the stage. Pixie will be back along with a, a whole group of other amazing women for our 4 p.m. session, Women in Crypto. Pixie, thank you very much for that. You're so welcome. Extremely inspiring. Everyone enjoyed it. And you have made quite a few fans here. Go get her book, everybody. Go get her book. <laughs> Your information is on the screen and she will be right back in 10 minutes.